Hi, uh, Lisa. It's really good to talk to you um, and meet you today and discuss your new film, Sisters with Transistors. Um, I watched it, I've watched it a few times now and just kind of found it really beautiful, but um, also a little bit sad, quite sad um, about some of the stories and, and uh, having had a, an interest in this kind of area, uh, sort of some of the re reflections that have happened in my career. So it was kind of, I thought we could talk about what I felt was a, a, a common theme uh, throughout the film was barriers and liber liberation. Um, so one quite uh, poignant moment for me was when Delia Derbyshire says, I do all sorts of stuff that I was told I couldn't do. Um, which, which again, I felt was a, a common thread uh, coming up, up, coming up against barriers, and somehow the electronic music provided this liberation. And early on, uh, Laurie Spiegel is that the right way of saying that? Yeah, uh, states that technology is trem a tremendous liberator, and it blows out power structures. Um, so I was wondering if that was something you felt um, and making this film, uh, that was a kind of uh, a point that you wanted to put across. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that that part of the story was really what drew me in. You know, I, I don't think I realized before making the film um, just how important and how enabling this medium was to women composers. I mean, before this medium, of course, women composers existed, but we basically have no recording or very little. Um, and so it was incredible for me to discover not only that this genre of music was female authored, um, but that many of those female authors were also the pioneers, the really the, the, that they were part of this, the beginning of the story. You know, electronic music was also, in itself a kind of rebellion so the women were attracted to that do you think that's um somehow you know it helped them to give a voice within every kind of circumstance yeah and also you know rebellion in so many different ways also obviously from in from the perspective of the role of women but also just from the perspective of how we define music it really completely changed not only um, yeah, our, our definition of, of what is music. And that, that was something that I was really, um, again, drawn to in, in the telling of, of their story. Building machines, using machines differently. There was all kinds of different techniques. There was almost, there's no, there's no one to say, oh, you can't do, you can't do it like that because it was also kind of new and, and, and the, you know, wider, I suppose the wider music were um, establishment were questioning even men and women. Uh, so it, yeah, they, I, I suppose it felt at the beginning like a level playing field almost. Yeah. One of the things that came up recently in another kind of discussion I've had was the fact that this music wasn't commercialized. It wasn't, you weren't able to press this music on an album. And so in many ways that may have been also the reason why for so many people it wasn't considered music, mm. which I thought was a very interesting point. Um, something that's not in the film, but just something that's come up after that. But yeah, they were pushing so many boundaries um, in terms of, yeah, what is music? I, I just, mm. and of course, like, while we all think, oh, well, of course we know it's music. I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's relatively difficult music. And there's an interview with Eliane um, where she's speaking in English, Eliane Reddy, and yeah. she talks about, you know, how music was, how people in Paris were not considering her music, music. And that was an interview that was recorded in the eighties. So it just goes to show like, yeah, yeah. They, they continue to struggle. And I think now I'm so happy that we can kind of celebrate them and that people are, you know, the, the audience reaction has just been so tremendous. Um, yeah. Yeah, and people I think, are finally ready for these stories. Yeah, and I think now that you know, music genres have split and split and split, and again, even just across across the board, the language is is difficult. You know, sound, music, uh, noise, uh, yeah, electro. You know, 
uh, new media, you know, it's, so yeah, the language is kind of um, quite a tricky, tricky one to navigate. So, but I think that helps, that helps with the kind of where we, where we can kind of accept them and, 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 and appreciate them. How, how did you, how did you select the artist? Was there any particular, any particular kind of formula or was it just, just these are the, the women you like or? It was really archive driven. So I should start by saying, um, this is not the comprehensive. No, no. You know, yeah. story of women in electronic music. There are lots of women and there, we are only going to find out about more. And so this is really, for me, this is a, the first step, the beginning in this process of uncovering these stories. Mm. But yeah, as a filmmaker, obviously I was drawn to um, the stories for whom, or the women, the subject for whom I could find archive. So that yeah. really dictated the, 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 who I could basically. Mm -hmm. um, was that difficult? Uncovering the archive was really tricky. Sometimes it was obviously easier than other times, but um, I really had no idea what kind of adventure it would be. It took mm. a good three years um, and I was actually still swapping archive in the last, you know, in the online edit where you're not supposed to swap archive anymore. Um, things just kept appearing. Other things were impossible to find the owner. So it was just, it's a whole process working with archive. Yeah. And of course, yeah, I mean, some of it came from the BBC and things like that, which was obviously a much easier situation. But then unfortunately, that archive is so expensive. So yeah, you can't right. really just build your whole film on stuff from because you, you just never can, could afford it. Mm. So there was a lot of kind of creative. Um, we had to find a lot of creative solutions to. To accompanying that art, that expensive archive with archive that we could afford or that archive that we could. Yeah. Mm. source for free but yeah the stories were quite hidden and buried and it was it was a difficult and long process and do you think that's just because I mean people didn't feel it relevant to record it or didn't feel it was relevant to save it or I mean is that similar across the board or is that just particularly uh, women's kind of outputs yeah well I think what's really fascinating though, to me is that, you know, a lot of these women were recorded. They were documented. So they, at the time, were considered to be doing something obviously important because of course right. not very many yeah. people were being recorded as, as they are now. But then the, the real thing, the real question for me is like how, if they were so important, how could the canon or history or the writing of the history of electronic music left them out? And because they were left out, then obviously, you know, the archives kind of got split up and Mm. um it was yeah it was tricky to to find but um but yeah I think it's generally it's just super important if you're an artist to document and keep your archive in one place you know it's that's the way that we have all this archive is because many of these women were archiving their work themselves so Suzanne Lori Spiegel they had they had their whole archive it was just amazing they just kind of gave me a hard drive full of this incredible stuff from all kinds of different pieces of um, periods of time. And then for other um, subjects like Pauline Oliveros, her archive is spread out in all the different universities that she worked in. So it's, mm -hmm. it was more difficult, um, but some of the more most beautiful archive in my mind really came from um, families and, and loved ones, um, you know, kind of home, more home movie right. yeah. things going back to the idea of giving uh women a voice um and uh the idea that it provides some kind of mystery i think that goes back to almost a kind of rebellious thing and this is kind of uh this is almost where i fit in this niche uh so there was an element of mystery um and it i, I do like this the trends and uh, it transcends power um, and it gives women the tools to speak to an audience. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, people came in and listened. And I think um, that was, you know, that's, that's a, that's a difficult task. Um, but I think with sound, um, 
it has this kind of mystery feeling for people with it, you know, within a kind of space um, and kind of can take you anywhere. Mm. Um, and then I also liked um, referencing um, that the machines can project their thoughts. Mm. Um, I'm just, again, it's kind of such a reference to you this is my voice through this machine because maybe you're not listening to my my voice mm. uh, in the physical kind of yeah. work. Um, well, there's and, something uh, very interesting about how electronic music amplifies, right? That's what it does. It like, yeah. amplifies sound yeah. and and, yeah. Uh, and energy and electricity. And so, yeah, there's something very beautiful about what you're saying and how, yeah, these voices, I mean, the history of women is a history of silence. That's something that, I, that the film starts with. And it's actually, um, was kind of um, riffed from an essay by Rebecca Solnit, who's a feminist um, environmentalist thinker and writer. And um, it's an essay she wrote about, yeah, that like half of mankind has been kind of erased from history. Yeah. Um, and so for me in the construction of the film, it became really important that the women tell their own stories, that we hear their voices. And so generally in a, in a music documentary, you often have like, you know, experts kind of weighing in and you yeah. rarely hear the actual person. You'll have somebody saying to you, oh, she's really important because she influenced so-and-so. Well, in this case, I really wanted people to discover their importance through their brilliance, through their own voice, through their own projection, through their own description of what, you know, their own stories and what they were inspired by. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, um... Well, I was thinking about Pauline uh, Oliveros. Um, she was saying that when she was sitting at home, her dad would be playing with the radio and she liked uh, it when the white noise came on, when he was mm. reading the channels. Yeah. Um, again, she was drawn between the, she called it the, the, the between sounds. Mm. Again, I was thinking it was referencing mystery yeah. and almost, and almost, you know, she felt that in between her herself. Mm. She was the in between sound, I thought, which was quite a kind of poignant moment. Um, you know, that feeling of in between is is quite. Uh, I suppose uh, not so much oppressive, but you you know you have to find a way of getting mm. in between that, and I think she maybe did that with her sound. Yeah, I mean the in between can also be quite freeing, right? Because you're yeah. you're not. Um, I mean, I guess you're you're limited by what's the two things that you're in between. But um, mm -hmm. I mean, white noise is is such a um, an open sound. You know, it's not. Um, there's no. There's yeah. It's up to you to create the story within that sound. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw recently that um, uh, kind of when composers um, and theatres are going to start taking on new musicians, they've started to do blind auditions. Mm. Um, and there's already become a kind of 50% increase in women being um, employed as part wow. of an orchestra. So again, I thought that was, you know, it baffles me sometimes why this has not been done before. Um, you know, how, you know, why is it taking us this long, do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting because of course, as a female filmmaker, you know, when you look at the statistics, it's kind of outrageous just how few uh, female directors are getting movies made. And of course, like now there's, you know, there has been a change and we're kind of starting to be aware. And so there's a lot of like press about, you know, these women directors, but if you look at the numbers, it's like a tiny, tiny percentage. So I can absolutely identify with what ultimately, ultimately must be so frustrating, but I think it is great, as you say, that there, you know, that these, um, I mean, the blind audition is brilliant, right? Cause it's like, it's all about, it's um but yeah I, I definitely felt like in the even as personally in the making of this film I I felt like you know um the the authority figures tended to be men and um I mean my producer was a woman and my like the people that I worked with were we were all on the same page but it it, it is interesting um 
just how how difficult it is for women to um, do their thing. You know, mm. I think about even my own career, like as a young person, I just, I didn't really think of myself as a director. You know, I thought of myself as a muse or as a, you know, somebody that would inspire somebody else to make things. I didn't think of myself as a maker. And it's right. only as I gotten, as I've gotten older that I've kind of started to, yeah, um, take my own space and amplify my own ideas and my own visions. Mm. But I think, yeah, we have a long way to go. And of course, like, it's not just a woman's story. It's like a everything story, you know, it's, it's, um, we really need to rethink everything. If, I think this is a perfect time to, to kind of rethink everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, 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 I suppose, women in the widest definition um, needs to be explored. Um, Can I ask you a question? Of course. <laughs> What is your what was your favorite um, woman in the film? Oh, um, I think it was um, Marianne, Marianne. Mm. Um, but some of them I'd not heard before. Um, what's what was the late the um, the first story? The lady at the beginning, the woman. Claire Rockmore. The, the, Claire the, Rockmore. Yeah, is that the air thing the theremin theremin yes i mean i'd yeah thought that she she looked as, she looked just a force to be reckoned with never mind the music <laughs> that she played um yeah i would sit down and listen yeah um yeah it was very yeah i liked that yeah i like that story yeah and that that archive of of, that comes from her family, you know, of, of her and her sisters in New York, that black and white. I mean, seeing that for the first time, I felt like an instant connection with the person whose story I was telling, you know, she's just so embodied. It's insane. Like she's what, a, like, like you say, like a life force and an inspiration. Yeah. And, and, and actually one of the things that, you know, with, when you're editing a film, there's parts of the story that have to be dropped, but one of the interesting uh, reasons that she got involved in playing the theremin is because, so she was a concert violinist from a mm. very, very young age. And she had a, a pain. She was basically when she, 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 she couldn't play the violin anymore because of a pain, like a physical ailment. Uh, oh, right, yeah. And so this, I love this idea that electronic music allowed her to connect with music again. Um, and of course, the precision and that the, 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 the incredible player that she was and her ear, um, which allowed her to, yeah, translate these traditional compositions, you know, through the through the theremin. Yeah. And she, didn't she describe it as playing like a butterfly? Yeah. Elegant butterfly. Yeah. Yes. Which which it certainly her fingers were when they were going. But again, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she. She certainly made people I think made people listen and she never give up which is great uh, and, and for that kind of pe time period it must be very, very difficult yeah very frustrating um yeah and, but then also very exciting right because yeah. you're playing this the air <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah I suppose yes the whole even the yeah the, the mystery behind that si that science is 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 incredible yeah. Uh, so yeah, it must have been like a, a complete magic show. Just, can you imagine being the first person ever to hear that, in and and somebody to be able to control something you just don't understand? It's very powerful. Totally. Yeah. And it's. I actually, I've since then gotten the theremin, and it's just really amazing because you're literally like you're just you're sculpting air. It's just the strangest kind yeah. of feeling. I really recommend anybody who ever has an opportunity to try it. It's really it's magic yeah. um but yeah i i love the scene of her like in the 70s you know with and at the table are these like it's bob moog and and you just have these guys who are just like uh in all of her <laughs> yes. um but yeah there's there's a little clip in the film of her performing in like 1939 i think and you know you see the setting and it's just absolutely gorgeous and of course yes. the camera is really far away and while she's performing, the camera can't be can't be recording because the cameras at the time made so much sound. So uh, you just have her entering and her leaving. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that dress, like everything about that moment, I mean, I just cannot imagine how just, yeah, must have been, yeah, just so spellbinding. Yeah. yeah. And the interest in electronic music, um, is that is it something you've you've been into or is this a new exploration for you in terms yeah, of yeah I definitely say that I've been very into it um and also like experimental and more avant-garde sounds mm. and soundscapes mm. um contemporary art is a very big thing in my life but um yeah I think it was more it was more it was I learned a lot like I really didn't I thought I knew a lot and I actually discovered I know nothing um, yeah, yeah. about just the history of electronic music about how you know war created opportunities for these instruments to exist but also opportunities for women um but yeah I've definitely always been I guess in a way in a parallel way electronic music was also my liberation you know when I was younger and I would go to clubs it was really the first time I felt free felt like myself yeah and so yeah. this the way that I when I first started kind of digging into the subject the way that you know mainly I think it was one of an interview with Lori the way that she was describing electronic music as the sound of liberation I really identified with um but yeah so definitely always been into music um electronic music as well but um yeah learned learned a lot about I guess what I love about these women is just that it's more than just um a beat or a rhythm or a melody you know it's there's it's a lot I'm it's a lot of ideas and 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 really thought-provoking music mm. Mm. yeah I think also what was really interesting about this this the, these women is that not only were they composers but they were also inventors um that was that was really fascinating I again it's 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 wild because it's 2021 and we know that there are women in tech and science and things like that, but growing up, I actually, to be honest, it just, I literally just thought of it as a kind of a male field. And I thought, yeah. you know, women yeah. were meant to be writing, you know, writing and painting and not. So it's just, I hope that what I hope with this film is that it kind of inspires a whole new generation of young women to um, explore their interests, whether it be tech or whether it be something else. But if it is tech, that they have role models that they have women to look up to as, it, um, yeah, to know that it's possible. Okay, uh, Lisa, I just uh, want to say again, thank you very much for the time. And it's it's been a privilege to hear insights about the film and uh, your thoughts and these pioneering women. So it was just really if there was one insight that you would want the audience to leave with um what would that be well i guess i should start by saying that again I, what i hope that this film um does is that it makes you question who's been left out of history and one of the things that i think um the, one of the ways the film has affected me is that it's really made me re-question how to listen. I feel like I hear and listen differently now. I think the world would be such a better place if we could, as Pauline Olivero suggested, listen deeply, listen inclusively, listen actively. Um, also for the things that have been left out of history. So yeah, two things, listen actively and question more. Yeah, that's that's a great, great attributes that we should have as individuals and as a society. Um, so yes, it, it's been great watching the movie and getting more of an insight from you. And uh, good luck with all future screenings and any anything else that you do in the future. Thank um, you. Here's to more women. Yes. Thank you. It's been Thank a real you. pleasure. Thank you so much for your questions. Thank you. Bye. Bye.